What's going on everyone? Welcome to Moon Build Garage and welcome to part four of my CNC plasma table build. Uh, I spent yesterday pretty much working on the drive system for the gantry, for the Y axis. Let me bring you in closer and I'll show you what's going on. So when I started really kind of designing my CNC plasma table, I knew I wanted to keep everything kind of contained within the footprint of the top. So that's why I like the legs, the legs are recessed underneath. They're not all the way out to the edge. And that gives me this space here under the water table, under this ledge to utilize. So when I started looking at designing the gantry support or the uprights here, I designed it in a way that I could take the motor, instead of having the motor stick out the side, that I could tuck it up here underneath. That does a couple things for me. Really, it protects the motor. Now I don't have this motor sticking out the side. And since this thing is designed to be moved around my garage, I don't have to worry about bumping the motor into anything. I don't have to worry about walking into the motor when I'm walking around the table. It also protects it from the elements. So, you know, dust, sparks, slag, water, anything coming off this table, since the motor's not gonna be sticking out here, it's gonna be underneath and that's gonna be protected. Um, so let me show you exactly what I've got going on with the motor. So I decided to go with NEMA 23 motors. Now, the ones that I decided to go with, they're, the torque rating on these isn't as high as some other ones. Um, I forget exactly what the torque rating is on these. I'll leave it here on the screen while I'm editing. But the NEMA 23s, actually just the NEMA motors in general, the 17s, I think, 23s and 34s, I think, it's really just a standard. And that standard, all it does really is, is this mounting face here. Um, all NEMA 23s are the same dimensionally here. So if I find that this motor isn't strong enough, I can easily swap this out for a stronger one. The only thing that really changes is the body length. It won't change any of the mounting surface here. So the alignment of my motor will stay the same Everything will stay the same, just the motor gets longer. So with that in mind, I went with a smaller motor because for a CNC, I'm not driving a router. If I was gonna be driving a router through wood on this surface, I would definitely go with larger motors. But since all I gotta do is worry about moving that gantry, there's gonna be a motor on each side. I think I can get away with a motor that is uh, not, it doesn't need to be as powerful as, let's say if I was doing a router. So that's why I went with these. We'll see how that works. So like I said, when I was designing this side plate, I designed it in a way that it would come down far enough that I could mount my motor on the back side. And I just got some of these brackets. I'll leave a link to these down below. And that just, you see the four screws, the four bolts right there. This is bolted to the back side, and then the motor screws to that. So when it comes to the drive mechanism itself, I decided to go with a belt drive. I feel it's a little more forgiving. Uh, you don't have to be as exacting when it comes to installing a drive mechanism like you would if you were doing like a, like a rack and pinion or something like that. With a belt, I could, I could be a little off in my measurements and the belt would be a little more forgiving. Plus it's just, I think just a little bit cheaper. So I already have it set up there. So there you can see exactly how I have it have it set up. The belt goes over that roller, which I just used the mounting stud, one of the mounting studs here that holds the motor to the bracket. I put a spacer and put a roller up on top and that keeps the roller in line with the pinion down there. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that. There you go, there's the pinion and then the two rollers. And then that just allows the motor, as the pinion turns, Everything rolls right along that belt. Now, I may have screwed up. When I ordered the belt, I wasn't really paying attention. And what I got is a five millimeter belt. I don't know if that's really gonna work. I hope it will. I'm gonna run it for now and see what happens. But it'll be easy enough to swap out. I just have to change the pinion and change the rollers to something wider. I'll probably be going with a 10 millimeter belt but for now, I'm gonna run the fives. So let me show you how I connected the belts on each end to make this all work. So for the front, I made this plate. 
Now this plate does a couple of things. First, you can see the belt here that goes back to the motor. The belt comes along, comes through this notch. Now I notch this for a 10 millimeter belt. That way if I do need to upgrade it, this is already done. The belt just comes through and then it's held in place with this locking strip. Just drilled and tapped that hole in the plate and it locks the front of the belt. Now, I didn't want to weld this plate on, so I just added it with a couple of quarter 20 bolts, just thread, just uh, drilled and tapped the frame. And that way this plate can come off. And if I need to modify it to go with another belt, if I need to replace it because the, even a 10 millimeter is not big enough, whatever the case may be, I can take this plate off and easily remake it or modify it. But what it also does is I made it so that it hangs down below the rail. And this provides me with a physical stop for the roller. Um, I'm gonna have electrical stops. Probably, I'm thinking about going with an, like an optic stop. We'll see. But this gives me a physical stop just to be on the safe side. So, if I roll the gantry forward, you can see that lower roller now hits this stop. I don't have to worry about it maybe you know rolling off the track should my electrical stop fail. All right, on the back side, I did something similar. Uh, I made another a similar plate as the front. Again, it, it hangs down below the rail and provides a stop for this roller. Then I took a piece of angle iron, just cut it to size, tacked it to the plate, and then added a couple of, again, quarter 20 bolts in the top of the frame, and that holds this in place. This bolt goes through the plate and behind this angle iron. On the back side of this angle iron are two nuts. Let me see if I can get a, get a shot of that. It might be a little difficult. <laughs> so there you can see the two nuts. There's one there, one up in there. You kind of see it. And the bolt goes through those nuts. And then I secured the belt, again, to the front of this angle iron. I got this in line and the belt secures behind another locking strip. But what this bolt does now is I can put a wrench on that and I can loosen that belt. I can tighten that belt up. And that means then if I ever have to replace the belt or if the belt starts to get worn out, you know, starts to stretch, I can tighten that down. This will change right now. Um, the size of this will change. Uh, this is just for testing purposes and, and for proof of theory, really. Um, once I have this idea locked in, this will be shorter and that'll give me more, more area to work with here as far as tensioning that belt. And again, if I decide to go with a 10 millimeter, all I gotta do is unbolt this, swap it out for a different locking strip, and replace the belt and rollers and easy peasy swap out. And that's really about it guys. I mean, that's gonna be my entire drive mechanism for the Y axis. Um, like I said, that five millimeter belt, I don't know if it's gonna last. I screwed up, ordered the wrong belt, sue me. Um, but I designed my belt retention system in a way that I can easily swap that out for a 10 millimeter belt if need be. I can just unbolt it, swap out the pinion and the rollers, slap in all the 10 millimeter equipment and be back up and running. But even with this thing racking a little bit because the other side's still free rolling, this thing moves with like almost no effort. I might have the belt a little too tight. Just the amount of tension is obviously making it a little bit, a little bit more difficult to move, but even then, I mean, it's really nothing. So cost. So I bought the NEMA motors on Amazon. I got a four pack for 40 bucks. So that means I got 20 bucks in motors. Uh, same with the brackets. I got a four pack for 13, means 650 for two of them. The belt kit, uh, that costs 15.99. Now there's enough belt there to do both sides of the gantry and to do the X axis. So for the whole kit, that was 15.99. Like I said, that gives me enough belt for this whole thing. The timing pulleys, the pulley that goes on the end of the shaft here of the motor, the ones that came with the belt kit were too small. 
the bore size wasn't large enough for the NEMA 23 motors. So I had to buy a kit of those or buy a pack of pulleys. I got a five pack for 829. That means I got 332 in two pulleys. That gives me a total of 4581 and a four day up to this point of the build, a total of 337.04. So there you go guys, for less than $350 for where I'm at now, based on what a ready built system costs, I'm okay with that. So now I just gotta go ahead and recreate on that side what I did on this side. Don't really need to, don't really need to show you all that. Next will probably be working on the drive system for the X axis, hopefully. Maybe I'll start trying to figure out wiring also at that time. But I appreciate you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one.